back to introduction of programming using C++. In this video, we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to actually read in data from a file, and we're actually gonna take the input from a file and print it out to the console window. Let's get started. First thing I want you to notice is that we need to include the fstream library, and you would do that by typing in pound include fstream. Next thing I want you to notice is now we need to declare a variable of type if stream. If stream is the object that you will use to read from a file. We've declared a variable of type if stream called fin. fin could be any name that I want because it's a variable, so it's programmer type defined. Now, after I define my variable, then now I have the ability to use if streams internal functions. One function that is within if stream is called open, which is used for opening a file. Open has one parameter. It has a string of characters which represent a file name. It could be a string literal or it could be a variable. In this particular example, we've passed in a string literal which is uh, test data, which is located at the root of our, our draw C drive. So if we look at the C drive, I see I have test data here. And if I want to show you my actual data, I can open this and drag it in here. I have a file of four composers. Every line has a character return except for the last one. One thing you'll notice is in the string literal I'm actually escaping the backslash character. So C++ uh, backslash character is a special character which indicates an escape and if I just did one backslash it would give me an error. So what we want to do is we want to escape the backslash so that we have a C colon backslash backslash. So if I had another directory here say I had uh, the file in under test, then I would have to do another backslash backslash to indicate that that is a directory or a backslash. So let me go back. Now the next thing I've done is I've declared a variable called composer, which is of char data type, and I've made it a char string array with 20 bytes, which means I can hold 20 bytes of character data. And we're almost all set to read in from the file. So we've opened the file. And what that means is that there is a file pointer somewhere over here, right before Beethoven. And when you call fin with an extraction operator, that's actually telling the file pointer to take whatever is in the first line and store it in the variable called composer and then that will make that in turn will also move the file pointer to the next line depending on the delimiter if this was a space delimited record fn is similar to cn where you have a delimiter where you have a space or you can have uh, enter to indicate that that's a new line this particular file has every line and it has a new line. So it'll have Beethoven new line, Mozart new line, Chopin new line, and then Bach, which I spelled wrong. Uh, and I don't have a new line there, but what the file itself has is an end of file marker, which will indicate to the if stream object that the file is done. So now, if I read in Composer, then I'm going to print out what I just read in to the console by using Cout. So if I compile and run this, you will see that I've just read data for Beethoven and I've printed it out to the console over here. You have to remember that when I read data in, the only thing that you're going to 
have is composer have the data within it until I print it out you're not gonna see anything on the console window okay so at this particular point after this because I commented these lines out I have another line which is my final line which is to close my file and that's good practice you should always close the file that you're reading from and I would use a dot close function and it accepts no parameters at all okay now let's look at doing a little more reading in from a file so let's say that we want to read in more data and I'll guide you step by step of how this happens so what I'm doing is I'm reusing the composer variable over and over again and in doing that that means that data is going to be overwritten over here if we look at our data file and I'm actually going to save this the first two lines here fn and cl fn will actually take Beethoven and put it into composer then my c out will print it out to new line but print it out to console then my next line is actually going to print out what do you think what do you think it'll print out is my question after uh, i read it in if you said that it prints it's going to read in mozart and print it out you are correct because what happens is every time you call this fn the file pointer moves to the next available data that it has after the delimiter so in this particular example I went from Beethoven then to Mozart then to Chopin and then Bach and Bach when it reads in Bach it says okay I know I'm at the end of file so there is an end of file marker uh, and it's behind the scenes so let me compile and run so there you go so I read Beethoven file pointer moved here then I called fn extraction composer and that read in Mozart and then when I read in Mozart I printed that out file pointer moves Chopin read it into composer file pointer moves and then finally Bach uh, and file pointer moves to the end of file we just close the file this is something that we must we we should do it's not a requirement you're not gonna get an error for that so remember that any time that you read in a file you're actually just moving the file pointer across now in this particular example this file has all character string data so what if we wanted to read number number data so numeric literal lit data so let's say I wanted to read some type of identification So now remember how CN works. CN works by delimiting the space and indicating that there's another input that's coming in. So we have to marry or pair this up with some other variable. And we want to, let's say we want to treat this as a number. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to declare an integer. So I would say just um, COID. I'm just initializing it to zero. So now all I have to do is just add another extraction operator on each line so that I do that, I do that, I do that, I do that. Uh, and then I will do this. Take this. that and take this so let me show you what actually is happening now now you're still moving the file pointer across except that the file pointer is no longer going to the new line it's actually going to go into the next line a next character after the delimiter space so in this particular example you have fn composer pointer is somewhere over here it reads it into composer and then it says okay I'm going to extract something into COID. I know that the space is a delimiter, so I'm going to take the 10 and put it into COID. And then obviously this prints it out. Then there's a new line, uh, and then FN will again read Mozart 12, Chopin 13, and Bach 15. So if I run this, if I run that, then you're going to see that 
uh, Beethoven 10 was read in into the following variables and I keep reusing the variables okay so now I am able to read different types of data from my file so I can treat this as an integer and then once I read it into my program as COID was an integer type if I had to do any type of integer operations or math operations and I'm able to because now I can do any type of math so if I wanted to add up all the COIDs I can do that so it's very very simple and you can put many many columns here as long as they're delimited by a space there is a way to delimit by something other than a space but I'll teach you that later in the semester or later in this course so very very easy to read in from a file uh, it's not rocket science so okay so I would oblige you to please try this example and see if you can read in from a file simple simple example with start with one just as I did with one variable of character string and then as you're confident then add in another variable of either double or integer and you can use this example file that uh, I have here so thanks for listening. Uh, again, my name is Alex Louis. Uh, you can always catch me at www.parttimeadjunct.com or you can email me at parttimeadjunct at gmail.com. Thanks again.